to Abby's for coming. Abby's, raise your hands. There's field directors from Adventist Frontier Missions. Um, Pastor Randy uh, greeted me last night. He's up towards uh, Canada somewhere speaking in a church. And I'm thankful for him to share the pulpit as we, as we share a little bit. Um, but before we share, I'd just like to take time to pray one more time. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for the blessings of the Sabbath. I ask, Lord, that you would come into this sanctuary, this house that many, many people built with you at the lead of the construction it's changed over the last 60 years but we thank you that you're here today I thank you that I'm among friends and I ask Lord that you would calm my spirit and Lord as you speak through me I ask Lord that what I say would allow people to get more and more invested in the mission here and around the world because there's many, many people here that don't know about Jesus and there's multitudes more that don't know about Jesus around the world. Some three billion people who've never heard the name of Jesus Christ. And I ask, Lord, today that we take on the challenge. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. It was a balmy, hot night. Um, the, the Frontier Mission magazine just came out, and this story has already been published, but I'll just tell you, Diane was driving, and um, I was guiding her to where we were going in Cambodia. And, and you have to understand, there's no night lights there. There's no, like, street lamps or lit signs to tell you where you're going. You have to kind of know the road. And... and um, uh, it was about election time in Cambodia. So the gates and the stuff that were blocking the road that we had to drive around, I told her, oh, it's just for the election. Just keep going. Just keep going. Dogs barking. It was about 9 o'clock at night, as I remember. And I told her, just keep going. There was another gate propped up. That should have been my sign to say stop. But we drove, and the next sign we saw as we went around a roundabout was, Welcome to Vietnam. We had drove better than an hour the wrong direction to Vietnam. And so I said, oh, we got to get out of here. So as we turned around, we saw the gate go down. And this officer, all decorated, he was obviously the head man, came running out, yelling at me. And I don't think he understood. I, I, he didn't know I understood what he was saying, but in Cambodia, and he was cursing at me, and what are you doing? And now our van is between nowhere, nowhere land, between Vietnam and Cambodia. And I have this officer yelling at me. I got out of the car. I, I walked up to him and Kinyam Samto, Kinyam, oh, Samto, Kinyam Adang, Ompi, Plowni, Kinyam Kit, Prohal, Gay Bak Chanao. I was telling him, I'm sorry, I thought it was part of the election. I didn't know. He said, You really must be stupid. <laughs> I assured him I was, and he lightened up a little bit. And then he said, Follow me. And I thought, Uh oh, this is going to be bad. I went into his office, and he pulled a piece of paper out of the fax machine, set it on his table, and he started drawing something on the... And then he showed me, and then he said, here's where you are, and here's where you need to go. Now get out of here. And they let the... They had already let the thing up. Diane had already driven out of no man's land. And <laughs> I'm in there by myself. But I remember for just a minute thinking, I could be going to a Cambodian jail. 
and I'd been to one before, to visit 54 men in a room no bigger than this stage right here with a bathroom this high as the organ and a shower on the other side as high as the... Because the drains, the drain goes out. So 54 men sharing the same toilet, no, nothing private about it, right here in the open, and the shower the same way. I decided to drive. Diane, you, you uh, navigate. So with me driving, we got back on the road, and I followed his map to the corner, turned right where he told me to, and took off again. And somewhere around 10 o'clock at night, the road forked, and I took the road that I thought I should go to. And in about 45 minutes, I was looking at the border of Vietnam again. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I just wanted to go to bed. I was late. Our bed was waiting for us in, in Mandokiri. We didn't go through all the barricades this time. Praise the Lord. I learned the first time I turned around, headed back towards the right road. I'll just tell you, Lord, Lord taught me something that night. One, it doesn't matter who's driving. <laughs> Anyone can make a mistake and go to Vietnam on accident. Um, what it taught me was is that there's a lot of lost people and it's not always their fault. Maybe how they're raised, maybe how they perceive who God is. And um, we finally made it to where we were resting that night and I, I could hardly sleep thinking about the man yelling at me. Um, at one point, I, I reached out and said, I'm sorry, I'm, I told him, I don't know anything. And I reached out to put my hand on his shoulder, and he went like this. I think he thought I was a terrorist at first, but after a while, I won his confidence, and I, I praise God because he finally let me go. This seems to be up just a little louder or something. I, I hear an echo. Is it, is it too loud? Oh, okay. As long as you guys are okay, I'm okay. Um, Diane, would you, would you back up a couple of, I, I see you're moving through already. Okay. We're, this is uh, actually in the Philippines. Diane and I had the privilege of going to ASI in the Philippines. And they have these little uh, three-wheeler motorcycles hook. It's just a Honda hook to a, a, an extra set of wheels. And, and uh, they're quite, quite uncomfortable, actually. I'm six foot three, and it, it's made for about a four foot three people. So, anyway, this is some of the first baptisms among the Penang. Those of you who are following us, um, this is exciting because the Penang haven't been baptized into the Seventh day Adventist Church before that we know of. The girl on the right uh, has been on the longest journey, but she is now leading, she now led the others into, into, the, uh, into the church there. Um, her smile is hard to miss around the school where she works now. We, we have a school started up there. And uh, this, th they're smiling here because this, uh, it was, everyone almost went in the river. The river is not real calm right there where Pastor Coleman is baptizing. And uh, it's just a blessing to see the Penang baptized and the water... Uh, is about 80 degrees, so no one's cold there. But it feels cold when the when the when the uh, sun is uh, 95 degrees. This is the group here. This this young lady, um, third to the right, uh, we'll get into a story about her. She nearly died re re recently, uh, but God miraculously saved her life, and she's become a Christian. Then you've got Kara and Daniel Greenfield on the outside, and the and the man next to Daniel is now leading the work among the Penang, so we're exciting, uh, excited about that. 
Um, this is that girl that you saw uh, being baptized. She was so near death. Diane, tell me what she had. Encephalitis and meningitis at the same time. And she also has some other inherent disease. Juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. It's so sad. Um, but that day I, I was able to carry her everywhere she needed to go on her way to the hospital. Um, this is Bo Hutchinson trying to get an IV. We could not get an IV into her. So we stopped and scrambled uh, to the nearest hospital that we could, we could get to. This is her, uh, the day we, we dropped her in. This is the next day after Bo had stayed with her all night long in the facility there. He's a nurse and had, had, had ministered to her and made sure that she got the best care. And here's the next day, this young lady that I was sure was gonna die on the way to the hospital. The important thing about this is two weeks prior, she had said, I wanna know Jesus more. And that's what took place in that last two weeks. This is uh, another uh, Sabbath school, uh, and you see so, uh, Sophia, is it Sophia? Yeah, Sophia uh, there, she was the one that I told you was on the long journey. Now she takes the kids and, and she has Sabbath school with them. It's so neat to see this first generation of Penang, which is a, a people group inside of, of Cambodia. We have the Khmer, and then you have like 300 other people groups. This is one of the people groups. Not advancing. Okay. Um, you see the missionary kid up there in the corner. His name's Alex. <laughs> he's, he's such a sweetheart. It, he loves to see Uncle Arnold when he comes. This is the man who was baptized on the left. And the, and the neat thing about, is it Kat? Uh, is that he, he has a burden for his people now. They're meeting underneath this tree. They say they want to build their own church. It, I can so much praise the Lord. These people are saving their, their uh, they call them real, real dollars, uh, and they want to build their own church. The missionaries want to help, so we're subsidizing it, but they want to get a certain amount of money, and they want to build their church themselves. So we praise the Lord that these people have a, an idea of ownership in their own church. So in the meantime, we're meeting underneath a tree where the church is going to be built. Uh, the, this is just a Sabbath morning. They, they put out a, a tarp, um, and they, they, they visit right there. Uh, the young people are getting involved because now they have church in their own village, and they go to school, and they learn about the Lord at the same time. Uh, Chris was very instrumental. Chris Hoffman here was very instrumental in, in working on the Penang School, putting it, uh, it's the, the floor in for the entire school and the, st and the stage work he did, the cement stage work. Um, this is just the ladies. Now, from this has sprung villages. I think this is 14 miles away. It's an hour drive. An hour drive away. Same people group. They're meeting in this, these people's house. It's an aluminum roof with just plastic on the sides. And we'll get a view inside there just for a second. Um, this is a these are twins uh, born to the lady in the orange dress. This lady over here is kind of not a backslidden Adventist. She's never become an Adventist, but she, she believes in our message, and for whatever reason, she hasn't become. But she's now spreading the, the gospel, uh, the seventh Adventist gospel to this village, which is an hour away. This is inside this simple home. This is actually where the people live, and they also let us meet there for church. Um, these kids are just precious. The Penang children are quiet and well-behaved. I'm not sure how, how that has to do with anything, but what it, it shows is that the, this adverse poverty and they're respectful and, and um, little tiny things mean so much to them. And my mom has made some dresses and some of them will be going to these very children in Cambodia here. Uh, and we're excited to be able to give them new, new dresses. Actually, when we first went inside, 25 people came to the outside of the house, and they were watching everything that we were doing, and the lady inside told us they want to see if our God is bigger than their God, because she had been so sick when she was pregnant with the twins, 
and she was still an animist at that time, but since then she had burned the fetishes, the amulets, all these spirit houses she had to her gods, and they were watching and they said, we wanna see if your God's big enough to take care of you. And so we're praising God, she's pregnant again, and God has been blessing this family, and she's sharing with everybody she meets how big her God is, and bigger than all their little gods that they serve. So. And they have little spirit houses and things. Here's uh, the first, um, it was for graduation, is that right, honey? This is the school dedication. Oh, day. I'm sorry. This was the opening of the school. You can see this floor is shining. It shines naturally like that. Thank you, Chris. It's a, a wonderful, wonderful, you can see how big it is. It, 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 Chris told me, he said he didn't know how he did that with men who'd never put this kind of coating down. <laughs> the missionaries uh, did a good job helping him, but Chris actually put every bit of that coating on, from what I understand, by himself. That's what they told me. Um, this is the stage also that uh, Chris uh, trawled the cement, and we're so excited. Uh, they, they got a new look at what quality looks like in this little school that's been built, and especially the, the men who did the cement work uh, marvel at how smooth he can, he can trowel cement. And so we're excited about that. This is the stage in it uh, being used for one of the first times. I think this is a little video. I don't know if we've got music for it or not, but we'll try. You can see the baptistry right underneath the girl's feet. Uh, we need to push play at the same time. We had a student missionary, she made every one of those costumes for those kids. And this was their last day of school to show off to their parents. Here we go. Not sure what happened there, but we didn't even get to the uh, crocodile yet. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is one of the children from the missionaries' children. He was filling in that day. One of the boys got sick, so he really didn't know what to do, so he got right in the way of the octopus. He wasn't letting the octopus come out for nothing. It was quite, quite hilarious, actually. You have to remember, this is a Buddhist and animist society, and they're singing about Jesus in the school in front of their parents. The words go, you gave me a heart and you gave me a smile. You gave me Jesus and you made me your child. You see them all barefoot on that perfectly smooth cement crest? Make you know no one's hurting their feet there, brother. singing this song to their Buddhist mothers and fathers in the audience and you get a chance to see it. It's, the building was packed, was packed out. This church is making a big difference in this, in this country. There's not another school like it in Cambodia, by the way. It's one of the biggest auditoriums in this, in this town. This is the, these kids had violins in their, in the, only two weeks before this, they played, the, uh, played this little tune. It, it it sounds terrible to me in some ways, but it's also music to my ears because they had only had violin lessons for two weeks. Can we listen to this? This oh. is a fifth grade class last year. They all stood up and wanted to be baptized, and only two of them are from a Christian home. So the rest of them are animist and Buddhist. They're in sixth grade starting this week. So I don't think we have the video on that. Uh, all, all of the fifth grade class came to their teacher and said, we want to be baptized because they've been promoted from one grade to the next. And in fifth grade, they decided, 
I want to follow Jesus. This is a bell choir. We had, we had, can we play this one? Cambodians are naturally noisy, so <laughs> until the music started, they didn't say anything. I mean, they, they went, weren't quiet. Recognize the tune. Oh Lord, kumbaya. These are uh, third graders? These are second graders. Second graders, okay. That's the third graders there. Third graders. Shine. This is pretty good uh, for kids that uh, their language is either Penang or Khmer, which sounds like what I was talking to the officer in a minute ago. Um, you could see it was a pretty packed house. It's a it's a beautiful uh, brand new facility, and we're excited about it. The teachers love it. The students love it, and it rains there during monsoon season about probably 90 days. So the kids just go from their classroom straight into the auditorium they're able to uh, play in there this is the whole lineup of the of the uh, teachers um, the Timmons there on the right Jonathan Nicolades there after one of the teachers and then you see the the Khmer teachers and one of our student missionaries Sarah this is the last day of school they have a hillside that runs down the back side of the school Chris you know it goes right down into a creek area and they take in a little tractor and they push the dirt smooth and then they put plastic on it. And um, some, some of these kids, it's the first time to ever do something fun with an adult because oftentimes children do not play at all with, with uh, adults and they just had a really good time uh, sliding down this and uh, they put soap on it to make it slippery and you can really get going. Now, here I am. I was out of control. I thought it would be good to have someone ride on my stomach, but those rocks underneath that plastic <laughs> about did me in. And uh, we, we were going pretty fast, so there was no stopping it. It started raining, and that just makes it more slippery. And uh, so this is what they do to uh, say goodbye to the old year. And uh, they have uh, some, uh, here it is, it started raining, Diane moved back, I don't know how she kept the camera dry, but you can get an idea what, what's going on there. And they're dumping soap by the gallons at the top. You see the men at the top, they have just soap, they're just do dumping it on. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. Okay, moving on to one of our other projects. This is the Gogondola project. These are some of the m most precious people in the world. They're so sweet, and it's from, they just live on islands, their own little islands, and they never get out at all. I mean, they don't leave the, the area too much. And maybe some of them have been to maybe Balimo or somewhere close like that in their canoe, but... For the most part, they just, they're sustenance people and, and they're coming to the Lord. That's all people coming to the Lord over there. That's a one bapt, baptis, baptismal class on the, on, the, uh, on the tarp there. And they're going over the 28 fundamental beliefs with them. 
and um, just before the baptism. And this is them coming down the hill into the, uh, into the river. And they try to make it look pretty. They put some um, little uh, palm uh, fronds and flowers and let it float. It floats. And then they, two at a time, baptize the uh, candidates. And they're singing the whole time. It's, it's the most heavenly choir you can ever imagine, Papua New Guinea. This precious uh, little girl uh, is just a, um, a reminder of they never get to get new clothes, so she, they get used clothes somehow, and then they hand them down, and they, and they, they sew them and everything. And she, but she's just one of the faces that we see over there of people who are finding hope in Jesus Christ. This is the group meeting for a little camp meeting. They built a little church there, and uh, the fellow sitting next to me is named Papa Galuma. He's lost his wife. He is so happy, though, that for 40 years he's been praying for a church to come to this area, and now there's a beautiful uh, little bush church there. The children are, are very sweet. They, they wear their, their best to church and so on, and, and uh, it's, it's a blessing to be around these young people. This is just another family. They just come and sit on the grass. And it's this, this area right here, uh, the Ericsons have made into almost like a little park. It, they keep it mowed. They have someone mow it. They pay the villagers to mow it. And the people just love to come and have camp meeting right there. The camp meeting had seven villages. So five were within a few hours, but a couple of the villages were two days by a canoe to come to it. This is, they had to add on another uh, plastic tarp about 20 feet wide and about 100 feet long to get all the people in uh, during this time. And uh, they take the time to uh, have feet washing between couples and between gentlemen and ladies and, and have communion while, they're, while they um, get together. The children are just precious. Um, they're uh, inspiration to me to, you see the, the wooden huts with grass roofs that they live in and they come and they have the big smiles and, and they're, they're friendly and they're kind and they share whatever they have. They share this stuff called sack sack with me that I try to give to Diane and then Diane tries to give it back to me. It's kind of like a chewy rubbery stuff that they boil and boil sap and anyway. I, but can the, I tell a quick story on the girl on the left? Could yeah, I just tell please, a quick? Yeah, please. She was my shadow for that it's one Sabbath. Her father is the head elder in Kotali. It's a church that's about two hours up by canoe. And she followed me around all day. And I couldn't figure out why she was kind of gloomy until all of a sudden at the river's edge, a woman went in the water and when she came out, this little girl's smile just went all over her face. And I found out from her dad later that her mother had just got baptized that day. Mm -hmm. And he had been praying for many years for his wife to be baptized. He was known as a criminal, um, very outlaw criminal before he gave his life to Christ. And since they were married and he's had six or seven kids, he said, I want my wife united with me. And all these years later, he got to see it that day. And his daughter was just beaming on the left there, so excited to see mom. And she wants to be a missionary one day, she said. So what a blessing it was. Okay, I see it's uh, seven minutes after. Is there a certain time when we need to stop? Okay, okay. All right, so this is another look at camp meeting. It's just like being in Hawaii there. It's very, very pretty and very, very well kept. This is them looking at my computer. The kids will gather around and look at your computer. They just, they don't see stuff like that. So it's kind of fun to show them pictures. Um, then the ladies just coming uh, and they just, they love their children. The children love moms and, but they're very strict with them and they, they, they uh, make sure that they're not out of line. Um, we just had a, this was AY in the afternoon asking people questions, they get really excited, they memorize scripture, and they stand up, and they just come out with the scriptures, and they, and uh, Papa Galuma always up there uh, testing them, and this is a miracle baby right here, this man had five boys, 
He wanted a girl so bad. And here's his little girl after praying for her. Last time we were there, we, they were praying for this little girl. And so this is a little miracle. This is mama on the left. And uh, one of the aunties in the middle. And then proud dad to have his, his little girl. They wrote us questions. I think we got probably 100 questions, and we narrowed it down to about 25 that we tried to answer that day. Um, the people came up with some really, really good questions. And, you know, it, it, you know the angels say, why do, we, why do we pray so little? You know, why do we study so little? Well, that day, I couldn't answer some of the questions. I was glad that Pastor Coleman was there and others were there. But the questions are very deep, and the people are so searching for what God wants them to know. Anytime you have lots of people together, you can have lice. You often t see people uh, going after mom's lice to make sure she's not itching during church or something. You can see the, this dress. It it's, um, probably was maybe her sister's or something. It's been well-worn. You can see underneath the arms. Again, um, we're so excited. We're taking over 200 dresses, I think, 200 and 212 dresses and some sh at least one pair of shorts so far for boys. Um, we always remember when they do baptisms, these things are sitting in the water. Um, this fellow, was, we were coming by, and he does not, did not care about us at all. He was about 14, 15 feet long, huge little, huge guy. Uh, we make fun of Mark Coleman. He comes out to do the baptisms, and every time he's in the boat, we see these things. When, when he's not in the boat, we don't see these things. In fact, one bumped our boat while we were, while we were uh, going along, and I'm sure it's because Mark was in the boat. The AMA project is uh, one we needed special prayers. We can't say too much as we're being uh, videoed, and, and but we'll just say keep in prayer out for this, this project. There's, there's uh, always troubles. And this is Edgeloza Hicks. She um, loves the people, and she's um, out there um, doing, um, she teaches the people how to read their own language. Many of the ladies don't know how to, how to read, and she has been instrumental in bringing them up to literacy, so now they can read what the package says in the market and so on. And so Edgelos has been in, in, instrumental. This is a, one of our new missionaries, um, Orion uh, Lawrence. He, uh, uh, he's a big fellow. He's bigger than me. And he um, often <laughs> sticks out in the crowd. But uh, it's a blessing to have him out there with his wife. Uh, the people are, are passionate about the gospel. They're, they're um, slowly building a church. Um, there, this is a, 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 a thatched roof church that they work uh, uh, that they use for Sabbath school each week in church. Um, this is David Hicks translating for me. Um, their language. Do we have a some of the language? Okay, we'll, we'll let you listen to some of their language. This is one of the elders, just a, a precious man. Um, the people um, have come from just uh, adverse poverty also. And you see Karen Lawrence on the other side. She loves, the ladies love her, and she's fitting in well with the ladies there. Um, they sit on split and half logs, Chris. <laughs> they just take the chainsaw or, and run it down and flip them up, and that, that's what they sit on. This okay, is a here video. Get a chance to hear their language here. Here we go. He's dismissing everybody to Sabbath school. You actually, about every third to fifth word is English, so you can kind of pick up some of the what he's saying. Talk pigeon has English all through it, except for some of the things they say are. Are different, um, hard to understand. This is a Sabbath school class. They go all directions off, uh, for sit under trees during during Sabbath school. 
Some stay in the church. You can see the new church behind being built there. Could you back up that one, honey? Uh, the new church going back. But you see the wood used to be red. It's been sitting in the sun so long, it's turning this blonde white color. Um, they're just waiting for roofing. They do whatever they can, and the, they poured the cement foundation. It actually needs uh, the, the cement poured on the, for the floor and uh, a new zinc roof, and then they'll have a, a church there. They, they won't have windows, but they'll work on it and use it, and they even use it now with nothing in it. You'll see in the next pictures. This is another Sabbath school class. Uh, Everyone is at different levels, and they try to meet all the needs of the levels of the people coming into the church. You can see the water comes, it, the water winds all around them and creates little villages where they live uh, kind of alone in families or, or little groups. And they meet for church, and they, they come in little boats from every direction, up, up river, down river. Another group meeting just out underneath the, the shade of the trees. Uh, another teacher teaching the children. And this is inside of the <laughs> what will be hopefully a, a church someday. But they're meeting in there anyway. This is uh, uh, the, the group gathered back for church. The Lord is really blessing on this project, but there is some, some troubles. If you want to come up to us later, we'll let you know. But just enough to say that um, the, the, the wickedness of Satan hates our missionaries and, and they need prayed for right at this time. Um, little boy, uh, obviously, <laughs> doesn't want his picture taken. Whoa. Sorry. Can we go back a couple? One more. Can you go back one more, honey? I'm trying. Okay. Well, while we're here, um, this, uh, the missionaries have slowly built this, this uh, house, um, and uh, we were meeting in there for just a staff meeting to find out where, what, what's going on, and it's, it's not completely constructed. It still needs electrical and walls and stuff, but it's coming along. Um, this little boy, uh, Diane, you took this picture, didn't you? Just a uh, very serious little guy. Edgeloza um, Hicks loves these little children, and every day at, after church, rather, every Sabbath after church, she takes them underneath the government building where there's shade all the time, and she tells them stories from the Bible. Uh, this day, I got to tell them a story of when I was a little boy, though, and they love the hearing the story, and uh, it, because it's so different, my story is so different than of the stories that they hear in their village. Um, and this is how they get to church, right here. The one on the other shore over there is a Cadillac. The one in front of it's a Buick. They're hand carved out of trees. Um, this is us in a 75 foot canoe with two 75 uh, horsepower motors. It'll do about 30 miles an hour. With all the weight, it'll do, with six tons in it, it'll run about 30 miles an hour. It's hand carved out of one tree, and oftentimes they leave the tree so you can tell it was a tree. And they stand up. I do not stand up. I tend to fall out in those canoes when I stand up. They're, it's not as easy as it looks. And I don't like falling into the water because I know that crocodiles like people like me, you know. <laughs> This is a project that's closed. We won't tell you where it's at, but we'll just tell you enough to know that uh, the, the man right there goes by the name of Joy, J-O-Y. And he just uh, picks leaves off of Morning Glory with the neighbor next door and, and just uh, gets to know the people. That's what it's all about, getting to know the neighbors and loving them to Jesus. This is a, a city where they live. Um, it's a very, very crowded city, and I, it would be hard for me to do this job, but they're, they're lovingly taking on the job and, and flourishing there. Please pray for this ministry in this unreached area of the world. Diane and I do what we call Dorcas Day. We uh, give out blankets and 
uh, food and stuff to the kids, they come running up to the car. This is just something we, Diane and I do on the side. We want to be able to be um, also doing something in our own village. And so where we live, we like to go out and um, the children uh, appreciate a lollipop and an orange or an apple that they never get, and we try to provide that uh, for them. And as well as this lady on the left, either just had a baby or is pregnant, and they get, we give them baby blankets and uh, that, this kind of thing to, uh, to help with uh, their babies. We also have GLOW in Cambodian, so if you see they're ha holding up the literature, everybody gets a piece of literature to learn about Jesus, so. Now I wanna tell you about this picture. I don't know where you could go in the United States and just go into a village there's our van behind us there. It's a little Chinese, uh, it's called a Wuling. It has, a, it has a GM motor and the rest of it's Chinese. And uh, we bought it and we love it. Uh, it was the cheapest thing on the market we could find. It was uh, about a year old new. And uh, so we're, we're, we're thankful for it. But where else could you drive into a neighborhood unannounced and give out literature and the people will be so excited and happy to have it. And um, so this is what we experience around. We, we never know where God is leading us. We just uh, take them. You can see they have some oranges and some toys. And, and we just, it's just really random. Uh, we have boys and girls stuff set up. And then we have um, uh, blankets and stuff for the, but the people are just so thankful for that we come and, and, and do this. And and uh, it's kind of, it's a lot of fun. Here's a new baby getting a blanket um, and some glow literature. We always, do, we don't give anything away that if it doesn't have literature hooked to it. So these two ladies uh, each got a, a little quilt and, um, um, and the blessing of a, a glow of a steps towards Christ or, or something like that. It's a little truck inside there, but it's full of also glow. The children come out and they take the toys and they take back in literature for us to their parents. It's a perfect plan. It's a perfect plan. Um, God is so good. Um, we, um, we are so thankful for this church. We know you pray for us. We feel the prayers sometimes and um, we need the prayers. Um, we, we realize that um, Renton has the same problems that all the rest of the world has. And we know that you're praying for us and we hope you know that we are praying for you. I, um, I want you to know that... Um, did I drop something here? Oh, here it is. I, I feel impressed to share this with you because um, there's some pews here empty. And so I'll just, I'll just share some, some things that I, some statistics. This was actually from the Adventist church. Some of you may have already saw it. Um, of 100% of the people in the Adventist church that would come back to the church, 36% are likely to come back if they're just asked. 36%, that's a lot. Just ask them to come back. Go to them and ask them to come back. 36%. One in three. One in three. Just do it. 21% are somewhat likely. Somewhat likely. This is a, this is a um, um, this is a poll of people, and they say, I'm, I would be somewhat likely if someone came to me and invited me back. So 21 and 36 is 57%. 57%. That's a lot. That's one in two, a little over one in two. 12% um, said unlikely, unlikely, but still, that's, that's, that's not a no. It's unlikely. 19% um, I'm sorry, and another 12% said 
it is very unlikely. 12% said it's very unlikely. I won't go back to the Seventh Avenue Church. And then 19%, it says it depends on the way they approach me. 19% said, so that could actually be added if we could just know how to approach people. And I can tell you something that always works. Loving people always works. Doing something for them that they can't do for themselves always works. Thank you for being that kind of church. Now go and find those people that are not in church this week. Another statistic that they said that of those people who left the church, 40% of them had no contact from anyone inside the church. 40%. 40% said, nobody said anything to me when I left the church. 40%. 19% said a church member did did come to them, though, 19%. That means that 81% nobody came to. 17% said an elder came to them. 15% said someone called them on the phone. 10% said a family member came to them. And 7% said the pastor came to them. And 3% said they got an email or a letter from the church. 3%. Are we doing enough? Are we doing enough? It doesn't matter if you're completely worn out by doing what God wants you to do, you get a whole new body. The scripture tells us that clearly. We get a whole new body, so just wear it out. Make those phone calls. Walk to your neighbor if you don't have the gas. Call those weekly. Let them get tired of, okay, I'm going to come. Just leave me alone. And they come, okay? Get them to come back. I'm glad Jesus didn't get tired of knocking on Arnold Hooker's heart door. Some of you remember me 58 years ago, and I was supposed to be a girl. My mom yelled in the hospital, a boy, I wanted a girl. She already had two boys, you know. That's hard on your psych, mom. (laughs) She brought dresses to the, I remember, I mean, I was just little, but I remember. She brought dresses to the hospital. I think people reminded me, and I I remember. But God says to go to all nations, and I am so thankful. There's not one nation missing in this church tonight. There's not going to be a special nation in heaven, brothers and sisters, and I'm glad this church reflects that to the community. This is an international church, and I'm glad it's becoming that way. It's an end days church, too. Jesus is coming back. I was just telling some people this morning in Sabbath school, Diane and I come back in jumps to the United States. And the security gets a little bit tighter. They're looking for more, what are you coming, what have you been doing? Why have you been gone so long? Now they're questioning missionaries why why we're gone so long. Scan your card. Let's take another picture of you, another thumbprint. And it's not that bad, but some countries, Diane and I go in, it is that bad. What are you doing here? Why are you here? Brothers and sisters, we're living down to the end of time. We see jumps. Jumps in clothing styles. Jumps in the way automobiles look. Now there's electric cars everywhere, you know? Who would have thought of that? And they're fast. Maybe when you're here all the time, you don't realize the change, but Satan doesn't want to let you know. It just comes in like a thief in the night. The Bible tells us he's coming back the same way. 
He's coming like a thief in the night. And so tomorrow, Diane and I will be flying to another place. We've been asked by our president, Conrad Vine, if we'll go to Mozambique because it's a place where the Brazilian Adventist Frontier Missions that's sending a lot of uh, missionaries and student missionaries and they come to our different countries and they speak Portuguese. But Mozambique, was, because it was uh, colonized by Portuguese, they're sending these Brazilians to us and we're going to hopefully try to funnel some of them into the unreached in Mozambique in some areas. So we're excited about that. We're hoping that the Lord opens those doors, and I ask that you pray for Diane and I, as is it's not easy. Sometimes I wake up in a hotel room, and um, I go out the door thinking it's the bathroom, and I, I'm in the hall, and I realize I gotta find where I'm supposed to be, eh? where I'm supposed to be. When you wake up in a different bed every day, it's not easy. And um, I'm always thankful when, we, when we're at home for just a little while, and we've been at home, and I can find the bathroom at my mom's house very easily. That's nice. So as we close, I, I guess we have um, a hymn. Is that right? Is there a hymn? I'm going to close because it, it's 1230, and I want you guys to not be too hungry here. So I just want to close with that thought. May the church rise. We will sing the first and last stanzas of 598. Watch ye saints. care that you've shown for this church, for the international church that it is, I ask, Lord, that you would bring people here in the next years and months that would find Jesus waiting for them with open arms in the form of loving, kind people that this church is. I thank you that you have put a work 
on our hearts and it's nearly finished. We're nearly going home, but Lord, we know the work is still there and we ask that you would help us to work tirelessly. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated.